hello and welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. Today we welcome back one of my favorite professors. I wish when I was going to school I had a professor like you. I didn't have anybody uh, that would challenge me. And I finally got somebody who actually challenges me. And that is our professor Gary Midkiff, who is also at Keller Graduate School, North Park University, and uh, you have other um, teaching. And he's always one of the people that they ask to come, um, special sp uh, guest speakers. And we are so happy to have him on our show to this more this today. Thank you. Okay, and we're going to be talking this afternoon, or if you're getting the show by evening. Uh, we're going to be talking about Vladimir Putin's foreign policy goals. And if you see, I have so many papers on this table because I really don't know where to begin. He is all over the place. And today, uh, unfortunately, there was um, a, a Russian fighter jet that was brought down by Turkey, who Turkey is a uh, trading partner with Russia, so I'm kind of, I think a lot of our viewers and people around me and myself is kind of questioning what happened. So maybe we could start off with uh, what happened to his, this is the second plane, there was a, a plane, a big passenger plane that was shot down supposedly by ISIS because they claim everything, everything bad that happens, they claim it. And today we found out that the plane was shot down, uh, a Russian plane. I'll give that to you, Gary. What happened today was not the least bit surprising. It was predictable. The circumstance perhaps was surprising, but the fact that there was going to be a plane shot down is not surprising at all. The information, as I understand it, is that the Russian fighter bomber was flying a circular pattern over intended targets. They already, they, the Russians, had already done some bombing this morning. This plane was preparing for a bombing run during the circle flight it flew into Turkish airspace. It did not respond and it was shot down. Sadly, the two pilots who ejected were both killed. Uh, they were killed by the Turkmen, a group that was fighting against Assad on the ground. Turkey had no ground troops. So whether Turkey was justified, we're not certain. Is 17 seconds worth shooting down a plane? We don't know, but both pilots are dead. But given the airspace and given all of the flights that are taking place of military nature, it isn't the least surprising that that took place. Sad, but not surprising. So why, you know, I guess a lot of people question why then, why would they sh uh, shoot down the, the pilots that were parachuting down? If you keep, if you allow the pilots, you can uh, use them as, you could interrogate them, you could find, they could be brought from negotiations, and they could find out exactly why Russia was up there. I mean, that would be a wonderful uh, way of finding and communicating. Why shoot the very thing or the very people that can help them uh, find out what, would, what, what happened and why they were there? Let me respond in this way. There's two separate issues, and let me separate them. First is the fact that they shot a plane out of the air. Uh, that's an invasion of airspace. They had no troops on the ground. Turkey did not. So when the two pilots ejected, they were going down into an area that they would have been bombing. And those fighters simply shot them. Of greater interest to me is the fact that Turkey is so vigilant in enforcing its airspace. But on the ground, Turkey's border is porous as they allow oil tankers from ISIS to bring oil across into Turkey to sell in Turkish markets. We have Turkey, who is supposed to be our ally, who is supposed to be and is actually a member of NATO, allowing ISIS to send over petroleum for sale and focusing a whole lot more attention on the Kurds in the eastern part of the country and the Kurds in Syria than on ISIS. That part of the border is wide open, but the airspace they're defending, that strikes me as a bit curious. And that's interesting that you talked about that they, that was their allies from, from NATO because uh, according to Vladimir Putin, he reveals that ISIS is funded by 40 countries, including G20 members. That's our NATO members. And here we're supposedly, we're all together on ISIS. We're supposed to all be together and fighting them. And what's going on? 
the people that were that were fighting were they're also they're giving money you know they're actually they're actually that's why isis is very very well to do why is isis well to do i don't do? have the sources that vladimir putin does but i would disagree with his statement about 40 nations are supporting here's what i think is going on if all foreign policy when you boil it down has to do with economics and trade how do I put my country in a better position? How do I protect my country better so that I can trade? We have a number of countries that are benefiting from ISIS petroleum, Turkey among them. If we look at sub rosa funding, we would have to look at Saudi Arabia, where the Sunnis in that country are providing funds clandestinely to ISIS to continue its fighting. ISIS does not have a bank account with 40 Western nations putting deposits in. I think that statement is a little extreme. Well, it's Vladimir Putin. I understand that. And, and he's our subject today, but yeah. sometimes See, he does go a bit over the top. It's yes. not Gary Mitkov. Yeah, <laughs> I, he has better sources than I do. I'm just saying that. I I'm know. Not going to take it yeah, because uh, the, the donor money for ISIS is um, it's for illegal oil trade. For you know, and they and uh, ISIS has a lot of illegal oil trade. They're getting very well. And that goes through water. the border with Turkey, which is yeah. the frustrating point because if we're going to defeat ISIS, we need to cut off the funding. The principal source of funding is petroleum. Now, the reports that I read say in the last 10 days or so that the U.S. and its allies have destroyed something in the neighborhood of 400 mm -hmm. tanker trucks. That's the petroleum going towards the um, Turkish border. That's one specific thing that we can do to choke off their financials. Yeah. That's a good thing. You know, it's interesting because I know this is 26 pages. And it's put out by Newsweek, and it says it talks about how does ISIS fund its reign of terror, and it's got it's a huge financial package supported by eight million people, which is now the size of a population living in the territories under ISIS control. If they, you look at the map yeah. of ISIS, it controls a significant part yeah, of Syria, right. a significant part of what used to be Iraq, though I kind of regard Iraq as a failed state now. Mm -hmm. That is a huge amount of territory. You drive, not that you and I are going to do this, but if we were to drive 60 minutes west of Baghdad, we'd be in ISIS territory. They control easily 8 million people, probably more. But they, 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 they fund, they are funded by people that don't want to give their names, and it's from different countries, and supporting. Why are people, you know, ISIS is a terrorist organization. Yes. Why are people funding a terrorist organization? That is, it, I, I just can't seem to, uh, you know, people that say, if they're, I mean, surprising who the people are. You know, and they're giving tons and tons of money to ISIS, and all ISIS does is come into their countries and, and kill their people. Look at what happened in France. Uh, look what happened to the... Well, the, France, the, France isn't exactly giving money to ISIS. That was just a terrorist strike, right. so I'm not concerned about the flow of funds from France into there. But when you look at the concept of a proxy war, where the war which is taking place isn't really about the countries that are fighting. We can go back to the Spanish Civil War in the 1930s for a proxy war if we want to do that. Part of it is a proxy war now. Iran certainly does not want the ISIS community, which is Sunni, to be successful. Saudi Arabia gives the money underneath the table, so we have a proxy war between those folks that Iran is supporting and what Saudi Arabia is supporting. The belief by those countries supporting ISIS is, well, we can control you, we can limit you, and when all this fighting is over, you will behave rationally. But I think a greater issue is that ISIS, because of their religious motivation and orientation, doesn't behave rationally. Vladimir Putin behaves rationally. We may not like him, but he behaves rationally. In other words, these are his goals. He's working towards those goals in ways which make sense to him. For example, why is he supporting Assad? Here's one reason why he's supporting Assad. By supporting Assad, he now has a naval base on the Mediterranean. He's never had one before. He had one in the Black Sea when he took over Crimea. But now by supporting Assad, he has a base on the Mediterranean for his ships, which is something Russia has always wanted to have. Now he does. So the steps that he takes make sense for him. Right. And one of the things that, you know, we're trying to get rid of all these dictators. We look oh, my look goodness gracious, happened. Suzanne. No, we don't. We love a good dictator. If the good dictator agrees with us, Hosni Mubarak. 
Terrible well, dictator for 30 years. We supported him. We loved him. I he know. was predictable. Okay. He took our money. Come on. That, um, of course. We, we love good dictators. We did support Musbarak. But when he was going out, you know, Obama, uh, the president, he did not support Musbarak. He supported the um, Muslim, the Muslim Brotherhood. And he did not support Musbarak. And that's what happened. He supported people against Musbarak. We lost Musbarak. We got the Muslim Brotherhood. And the Muslim Brotherhood, you know, Muslim Brotherhood, that's one of the, the Muslim, ISIS people. The Muslim, no, no, the, no, time out. The Muslim Brotherhood is not ISIS. We need to separate those two. I mean, the Muslim Brotherhood was. But they was, support ISIS. No, they don't. Not in Egypt, they do not. The Muslim Brotherhood was democratically elected. They had been working unofficially because Mubarak didn't allow them to be in existence for a couple of decades. When they had free elections, the Muslim Brotherhood won the election, and then the Egyptian military said, ooh, we don't really like what it is you're doing. You're out of power, and here comes General Sisi who's going to take over. But in terms of liking the good dictators, let's go back to Iran in terms of the Shah, one of our favorite dictators of all time. With the Shah of Iran? He, absolutely. Yeah. He, he took the oil wells and said, okay, we're going to denationalize them and let the Western countries take profits. That was good. And he fought against the Iranian people, but he was our dictator. We have a bad habit of supporting dictators. Okay, but we also have a bad habit of getting on the wrong side. We, get, we, we support the rebels, and a lot of the rebels do become ISIS. So we, have a, we, we don't always support the right people. And in this situation with Assad, I feel that, I mean, this is my opinion, I think we should go along with the Russians at this point. I mean, Assad eventually will probably go out of power one of these days, but at least he's against ISIS. Okay, and with Russia and Assad and the United States, we could form a coalition and get rid of uh, no, ISIS in some way. No, that won't work. Let's go inside the mind of Vladimir Putin for a minute. Now, this is scary. It's only going to be momentary. Okay. We're going to be inside his head for just, for just a little I bit. I just want to tell our viewers, <laughs> this is, what, this is what, um, what, what current events is all about. We agree, and then we disagree. And so many of the politicians, they yell and scream at each other, and they have the best lunch together, oh. like we did today. Yeah, but we don't, yeah, but we don't, <laughs> we don't scream. We're actually civil. But so we, inside yeah. the mind of Vladimir Putin, what he sees in terms of Syria and Assad. What he wants to do, not what he says he's going to do, but what he wants to do is eliminate the opposition to Assad because he wants Assad to be as strong as possible. Assad is a trading partner. Assad buys a lot of military weaponry. Assad has given him that space on the Mediterranean Sea. Right. When all of the people that are fighting Assad are eliminated, this being Putin's hope, we're going to be left with two alternatives. Okay, it's Assad or it's ISIS. Now, at that point, the world fairly directly will, co will coagulate around and crush ISIS. I'm sure that they will, at which point Putin can then negotiate and say, well, I guess Assad should stay in power for a while. We have a peace conference going on. There's a 12 nations, I believe, yes. talking about what's G20. going to happen on the G20, yes. talking about what's going to happen in Syria after the current yeah. fighting is done. Of course, Assad's not invited to that, and ISIS wasn't invited either because ISIS is one of our targets. But at least we're having the political discussion so we don't duplicate what we did in Iraq, which is, okay, we're going to take out Saddam Hussein, and then we're going to hope something good's going to happen. There was a vacuum, and it was awful, and I it still is. I think maybe that was what, what one of our biggest mistakes. I know Saddam Hussein, a lot of these That's dictators... That's worth another program, why, we, why that's wrong, yeah. Dicta Please. A lot of these dictators are, you know, they're pretty bad. They kill off their own people. They do, they well, do well, a lot of hard things. the way, in the Iran-Iraq war... not always as bad In the Iran-Iraq war, when Iran was fighting Iraq, Iraq, which side were we on? Iraq, we supported Saddam Hussein. We just don't, you know, good dictators. Let's go back to Vladimir Putin. So, Putin's hope is that he eliminates the forces fighting against Assad and we're left with ISIS and Assad and he keeps Assad in power. Whether that can take place, I don't know. Critical to that is the bombing of that passenger plane where, what, 200 and some Russian tourists okay. were killed because there will be pressure from inside his country to do something about that. Russia has now admitted it was a bomb that was brought on board. ISIS has claimed credit as they claim credit for many do you things. Think, do you think that ISIS did it? Yes. And they, sh they showed a little can of pop with a, with a very, it's like a,